And good after evening. <laughs> it is already evening. Good after evening and welcome back to another episode here in the Off Grid Garage. Late night show again. Well, I have filmed most of this episode already this afternoon, but I thought I'll put something in front of it, which is, well, not quite usual. And also welcome back to part number four of Build the Battery. I know it is a lot of parts, but you know, well, while I'm talking, I can actually I can actually prepare everything for what I was going to show you here in regards to the BMS. So I know there are a lot of parts to build just the battery, you know. You can see this on other channels as well. They have eight to ten minutes videos on there and they're building the whole battery in this time frame, you know. We have a lot of beginners here on this channel as well. The inverter has arrived. Well, we have a lot of beginners here on the channel and I don't think, I really don't think you get much information out of an eight or 10 minute video in regards of building a battery, you know. So, and this was always my concern and my, my critic on these kind of videos. They give you a broad overview of what's going on in building a battery and everything, but they don't really show all the little things you need to build a battery, all the details. You, you cannot put this in an eight minute video. This is, this is ridiculous. I mean, so it's, uh, it's good to have this overview of what you need and how this in general works, but I mean, have you seen any of the other guys making such videos sitting there in their garage and crying because they didn't have the right tools? Hmm. That's what I mean. And if you follow my car channel, you probably know what will come now. So I've got the BMS here and I also have a screwdriver here. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the QUCC QT200AYCZ, whatever that all means, it doesn't matter. So I would really like to have, before we put this into our battery box, I would really like to have a look inside here, you know. I'm always keen to see how the build quality is and what kind of material they use and especially with these large cables here, how are they connected inside? How good is the soldering and overall quality? Because um, many of you have, or well, not many, but some of you have already asked what kind of BMS I'm going to use. Well, I'm using this one here, the QUCC. And the reason why I haven't linked this one on my website yet is, uh, I'll tell you at the end of the video. I definitely need a bigger screwdriver here. I'm not sure if this voids warranty actually on the case. I probably don't need to take this off actually here. No. <laughs> nice. Okay. And this was one of the reasons I actually decided to buy this BMS here because because this is not using any MOSFETs inside like the other BMS. MOSFET is like a um, power performance transistor which carries all the load of your um, BMS, of your battery, to the charger and to the inverter. But this one uses a relay or a contactor. And interestingly, this is actually a BYD. This is a Chinese electric vehicle company. Well, they're doing other things as well, but they're building electric vehicles as well. And you can see here it's a um, 300 amp 12 volt, 24 volt DC contactor or relay. So a very high power relay which you use usually in electric vehicles. There's another sticker on the other side. And I'm actually very impressed with this bus bar here. This is pure copper going to the contactor. And this is the antenna of the Bluetooth module here connected to the main board. We've got the logic processor and this is where our balance cables will be connected. I'll show you this in a minute. I filmed this already as I said and see all these little the, all these little squares here soldered onto the main board. These are resistors and the logic basically measures the voltages of each individual cell and if the voltage goes too high in one cell it activates these resistors here and discharges only this one cell via the balance leads. 
And these are all resistors here responsible for the balancing of the whole battery bank. We've got a buzzer here, some more little integrated circuits here, not sure what they are doing. And, ooh, and a 10 watt resistor, a ceramic resistor, not sure for what that is. Yeah, actually I wanted to have a BMS with a contactor or a relay inside. Um, the reason is uh, basically heat. You know, we've got this box here with all the battery cells inside and I didn't want to have the BMS here with 20 or 30 MOSFET transistors in parallel carrying this load and getting hot as I really wanted to have this as cold as possible and they offered one with the contactor inside and I'm not sure how much power this one actually takes okay let's see now this is OL overload so there is no connection between these two contacts at the moment without powering the coil. They need to apply these 12 or 24 volt here to the contactor to switch the load on to make it work. And this makes kind of sense you know because if the load is connected you have enough charge in your battery to power this relay and I think this is a very low power relay it doesn't take much energy much power at all to run this coil you know my test bench setup I had with the batteries and the BMS already I had this running for a couple of hours and I could not feel any it didn't get warm at all on the workbench so the whole contactor situation here seems to work fine but of course we are doing some more measurement in this regards later on to see how much power this actual contactor uses so this is just what it, what i wanted to see the there's actually a shunt in between here this is how this is how the bms measures the amps you can see it's been cut in there to calibrate twice so overall, it looks good. It looks really good to me. Okay, I'll put this together and, and don't tell anyone. All right, I've got everything together again. So the whole BMS comes in this aluminum case here. Some of you guys say aluminum. And we've got the balance lead connections on here on this side. You can see from B0 to B20 because this is a 7S to a 20S. And what else do we have? An NTC. It comes with a temperature probe here, which you can connect to your battery. And there's another cable. It's called SW. And this has a little plug there, but I don't know for what that is. It doesn't say in the manual at all. Uh, probably an undocumented feature. Is this a switch maybe to... I don't know. I'll ask and see what they additional port rs485 these are these two pins here i would say and here on the other side we've got the c minus cable coming out and the bluetooth antenna and that is pretty much it there's no led no lights no nothing well having seen the inside now of this bms it's really good because you could potentially shorten these cables here or connect even your own cables to the bus bars inside so there's no soldering necessary like with other bms's where you have to solder on your your own cables and everything this is all done via these terminals inside and they look really thick and strong and sturdy so this is pretty good quality actually for this price well, the price was one reason I actually chipped in for this BMS here because it was, I would say, 50% cheaper than a Delhi BMS. If it's better or not so good, I don't know yet. It was just the decision I needed to make at this point of time because it took about five weeks to get it here from China. And I said, well, it may not be the last BMS I ever use, you know, with this battery together, but it's a good start. It's a high quality bms i like the idea with the contactor the only thing i don't quite like is that they're using only a four gauge wire um this is like a 25 square millimeter cable not even that it's actually a 21 square millimeter cable and this is fairly thin if you um so if you compare this to my 
welding cable here. This is a two gauge uh, 35 square millimeter cable and this is a four gauge a 20, well 25 would be the comparable size but it's only a 21 actually. And they say it's good for 200 amps continuous load. I don't see how they get 200 amps through this wire here without getting this really warm. So there's a little bit of saving in here to use not the right cable size for 200 amps. So if I would use it for more than 100 amps and you know I've got the fuse in there 100 amps and the inverter will only be 3 kilowatts. So I will I will actually use about 60, 70 amps only. Probably would go with the thicker cable here and wire this up directly to the terminals inside on the bus bars. But for the 100 amps, that is all right. I'm not pulling 100 amps all the time continuously from my battery. At least not at the moment. Otherwise, I need to well, I need to monitor the BMS anyway. All right, guys. I think this is all I wanted to show you before we actually jump into connecting the BMS to our battery now, which I which will come in a second here. So I would say enjoy the rest of the video, and we will see us again at the end of the video when I tell you more about the BMS. Okay, um, enjoy. And of course, each BMS comes with this very scary. A uh, bunch of cables here in this connector. You have to connect uh, to the battery on one side. You have to connect these to the battery terminals and this one goes into your BMS. And these are basically the voltage sense cables so the BMS knows what every voltage of each cell is and can act accordingly. So discharge one of the batteries or turn off the whole battery bank if it gets too low or too high. So these are very important cables and you should not mess them up. One cable, the black one, is the most negative one and the next white one is the positive of the first battery. The next one is the positive of your second battery and the third one is, you've guessed it, the positive of your third battery and so on. So this is how the BMS measures all the voltages to your battery cells and as you can see this is the white this is the white connector here on the side which goes in there and there are more balance leads with another here it is yeah there's a second balance lead which comes with the BMS so one plugs in here and the other one plugs in here so that that's how you connect it to the BMS and then this is your most negative and then you've got positive battery one positive battery two and so on all the way through so you need to ask the supplier of your BMS for the correct wiring diagram and I've seen this many many times with other BMS's as well you need to combine certain cables together and this is totally random it looks like this is totally different to whatever kind of configuration of battery you have and you want to connect to your BMS. So I have sent this shop at AliExpress a quick text message and they replied within 30 minutes and sent me the configuration for this BMS over for a 16S battery. And accordingly I have connected all the cables now to ring terminals and we can now start building the battery. Now I'm, I'm honest, I'm, I'm super honest now we can now start building the battery because well we've got everything here now we've got the BMS now we've got all the balance lead and I'll show you step by step how to connect all these balance leads here to our battery now. <laughs> 